Hello, it's Metagosis Perfect Schneiders, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we had 20 biochemistry questions. Today, we have even more. So bring a pencil and a paper and let's see how many of these will you answer correctly. Let's go. Also, I always tell my students to create a mistakes or boo-boo notebook. And anytime you make a mistake, write down what you have learned in your boo-boo notebook. Your boo-boo notebook will turn out to be a valuable resource way more important than any question bank let's go if you want more questions i have a playlist called mcat questions for questions on biology chemistry biochemistry and soon we'll add organic chemistry and physics if you want medical questions i have another playlist called vignettes or cases First question, number 21, because the previous 20 were in previous videos in this biochemistry playlist. From this given graph, what is the value of Vmax or the maximum velocity? Is it 100, 4, 12.5, 50 or 200? Please pause. Here is the answer. Recall that the value of Km has a definition. It is the substrate concentration that you see when the velocity is half, i.e. half of Vmax. So this 50 is half of Vmax, which means Vmax has to be 50 multiplied by 2 equals 100. Next question. Which of the following amino acids cannot contribute to the process of raising your blood sugar during prolonged fasting or starvation? Is it A, alanine, B, arginine, C, tyrosine, or D, leucine? Please pause. Look, if an amino acid is going to raise my blood sugar, it can only do so by gluconeogenesis. And when an amino acid contributes to gluconeogenesis, we call it glucogenic amino acid. Gluco means glucose, i.e. blood sugar, and genic from genesis, formation. Which of these are glucogenic amino acids? Alanine is, arginine is, tyrosine is. But that's not the question. The question is which of the following cannot. The one that cannot is leucine, because leucine is not glucogenic. Leucine is ketogenic amino acid instead. Remember, some of my amino acids are glucogenic, some of them are glucogenic and ketogenic, some of them are purely ketogenic. Who are these that are purely ketogenic? Lysine and leucine. Since they are not part of the green circle, lysine and leucine cannot raise my blood sugar during prolonged fasting or starvation. How about isoleucine, phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan, threonine, and serine? These are both glucogenic and ketogenic. And since they are still part of the green circle, they are glucogenic and they will be able to raise my blood sugar during fasting. And of course, the glucogenic ones will raise my blood sugar during starvation. So the ones that cannot do it are the ketogenic, only lysine and leucine. Please refer to my video titled Gluconeogenesis to learn more. Next, during DNA transcription in prokaryotes, which of the following enzymes replaces RNA bases with DNA bases? Is it DNA polymerase alpha, DNA polymerase delta, RNase H, DNA polymerase 3, or DNA polymerase 1? Please pause. Since they are asking about prokaryotes, the answer is DNA polymerase 1. Remember, in my video on DNA transcription, we have talked about the different types of DNA polymerases i.e. the enzymes that make polymers made of DNA. And we divided them into two groups, those who help the prokaryotes and those who help the eukaryotes. Bacteria versus humans, for example. If you want to make new DNA, well, that's the DNA polymerase. In prokaryotes, it's DNA polymerase 3. In eukaryotes, it's DNA polymerase alpha or delta or epsilon. Mnemonic, remember, in order for you to make DNA nucleotides, which are made of three parts, the sugar, the base, and the phosphate. So three parts, three, DNA polymerase three. How about in eukaryotes? You have three types, mnemonic time, add DNA. How do you add? Well, I add alpha, delta, and epsilon. It's add spelled funny. Next, if you want to remove the RNA primer, in prokaryotes, DNA polymerase one will do it. In eukaryotes, it's RNase H. Because in order for you to remove uh, RNA primers, you gotta be an exonuclease from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. In bacteria, DNA polymerase 1 is this exonuclease, 
and a nucleus RNase H represents this exonuclease. Mnemonic time. It's easier to destroy than to build. If you want to destroy the RNA primers, you use one. But in order to build, you need more numbers. So DNA polymerase 3. Next, if you want to replace those RNA pieces with the DNA pieces in prokaryotes, it's the same enzyme DNA polymerase 1. But in eukaryotes, it's DNA polymerase delta. Mnemonic delta DNA. Or you can write it like this, DNA polymerase delta is going to swap DNA for RNA. And that's why the answer to the previous question about prokaryotes is DNA polymerase 1. Next, what is the rate limiting enzyme in the cholesterol synthesis pathway? Please pause. Let's try them one by one. Carbamol phosphate synthetase 1 is the rate limiting or rate determining enzyme for urea cycle. How about carbamol phosphate synthetase 2? That is the rate limiting enzyme in the de novo pyrimidine synthesis. Remember that your DNA is made of pyrimidines and purines. And while we are here, what's the key rate limiting enzyme for purine synthesis? Answer. It is the glutamine phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate amidotransferase, or PRPP amidotransferase. It's a mouthful, I know. Carnitine acyltransferase 1, or CAT1, is the key rate-limiting enzyme in fatty acid oxidation, such as beta oxidation. How about HMG-CoA synthase? This is the rate-limiting enzyme in ketogenesis or formation of ketone bodies during fasting or starvation. What are the three ketone bodies? Acetone, acetoacetic acid, and beta-hydroxybutyric acid. E, HMG-CoA reductase is the rate-limiting enzyme in cholesterol synthesis, which makes E the correct answer. Let's do it again. CPS1, urea cycle. CPS2, de novo pyrimidine synthesis. CAT1, fatty acid oxidation. HMG-CoA synthase, ketogenesis, HMG-CoA reductase, cholesterol synthesis. Most of them were discussed before in my biochemistry playlist. Next, here is glycine. Okie dokie, here is pKa1 for this end and pKa2 for the other end. Amazing. If glycine is to be put in a medium whose pH is 6, which of the following forms would glycine exist in? Is it A, B, C, or D, please pause. The answer here is B, a positive end and a negative end, a hybrid. And what's the name of a hybrid ion in German? Zwitter ion. Zwitter means hybrid, positive and negative, making the entire structure overall neutral. Why is this true? Because at the pH of 6, this makes the pKa1 lower than the pH of the medium, whereas pKa2 is greater than the pH of the medium. And remember, when the pK equals the pH, the protonated form will equal the deprotonated fraction. But when pKa exceeds pH, as in this side right here, the pKa is about 10 and the pH is 6. So the pKa exceeds the pH at this side. What's going to happen? The protonated fraction will exceed the deprotonated fraction. What is the protonated fraction here? Answer, NH3+. Plus. Lots of protons, which are positive. So the amino fraction will exist like this, NH3+. Plus. Next, let's look at the other side, the other wing. This pKa is lower than the pH, which means the deprotonated fraction will win. And what's the deprotonated fraction? Is it this guy or this guy? Deprotonated means without protons. This has protons, so ignore it. Without protons, baby. COO negative. So this side will exist as COO negative. A positive charge on one side, a negative charge on the other side. It's a hybrid. Zwitter ion. And this will be my final answer. Got it? If you're struggling with this concept, please refer to my video titled Titration of Amino Acids. You will find it in my biochemistry playlist. 
Next, all of the following biochemical processes take place in the cytosol, or the cytoplasm, except ketogenesis, HMP shunt, fatty acid synthesis, or nucleotide synthesis. Let me know your answer in the comments. You will find the answer key in the next video, in this playlist called Biochemistry. If you find these videos helpful, please consider supporting the channel by buying me a coffee to help me make more videos for you in the future to help you pass exams. You can download my biochemistry notes, chemistry notes, biology notes, physiology notes, hematology notes, respiratory notes, and much more on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about the glomerular filtration rate, GFR, the loop of Henle, countercurrent multiplier, countercurrent exchanger, titratable acidity at the distal and collecting ducts, download my renal physiology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. There are more than 1500 free videos on this channel, plus 300 premium videos when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you'd like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.